these are all things that hurt and you hopefully grow more than the hurt is. Right? Hello and welcome to the sixth zodiac sign of Virgo. Virgo is the most massive constellation in the zodiac as far as astronomy is concerned of the 88 constellations. Virgo just takes a huge chunk of the zodiac up. And in Western astrology, it covers about the end of August to the uh, midpoint in December. So August 20th or so at the end of Leo to September 2021-22. It is probably the most analytical sign and it is the direct opposite of Pisces. So um, as Pisces is very dual sign and has a lot of um, things that you would compare and contrast things to, Virgo is very androgynous, very, um, it's a very sexual sign actually, very orderly and to the point. Um, obviously its planet is ruled by Mercury, or maybe not obviously, um, so it does have a lot of Gemini-like characteristics, but it's much more feminine, much more um, approachable, and um, also a mutable sign. Um, Mercury, of course, is the messenger between all the gods, so that is a key element of Virgo. And part of that being a messenger is being organized and keeping things together. Kind of one of the biggest things I think about when I think about Virgo is open data. Um, so like especially when we're talking about IT or technology, um, there is a democratization of data that needs to happen in all elements of life. And they're just kind of, as humans, we need to have some sort of democracy in general. So there has to be some sort of voting system where the best ideas rise to the top. So even in some of the more um, dictatorial elements of societies, the ones that are successful always allow for um, the input of others and taking information. So Marcus Aurelius is an amazing example. Um, one of the, probably the most powerful people ever to rule any part of the planet. Ruled the, you know, was the last of the five great emperors of Rome. Um, ruled Rome pretty much with an iron fist and is considered one of the great philosophers um, of society because literally on his deathbed somebody basically stole his journals out from other them and, pub and they were published as the meditations. Um, that great stoic work that really tells us like how to um, you know, how to approach life in a really good way, right? They're just snippets of wisdom that we can come to and approach. Open data is just sharing information. So um, the big thing in tech now is how do I govern my data? How do I get the data to as many people as possible in a responsible way that protects the interests of the people who generate that data? and also allows me to have that energy and that connection, right? So we're talking about advertising, marketing, um, and really getting knowledge out to people. And like, how do we do that? How do we build that? How do we kind of go through that process? And that's really that um, process of organization, of thinking through the process. So in you know in supply chain and tech we're going to be talking about six sigma lean agile um different methods of either allowing workers to have space to do their work such as agile or having a process of doing that work which is kind of like waterfall or jira um, or other technologies that um, just keep track of things for management. And then there, um, of course, are 
different ways of interacting with people. Are you doing interviews? Are you coming up with um, user stories? Are you um, creating energy for your... Uh, so what are the people that you're helping? You know, what are their needs? How do you go through that? How do you generate the, those ideas and kind of start working forward? So that's that's the concept of like open data and allowing people access to, to information. Um, you know, what courses do they have access to? What have they thought you've thought through? Um, what are you are you allowing them to share their code with other people outside of your organization? As we democratize data, we get better results. Uh, we can talk about like simple skills, and I think the great example of single simple skills is defending against the zombie apocalypse and i really like this for a lot of reasons one i grew up in the 90s and the zombies were huge um you talk about um you know pride and prejudice and jet zombies and um there were tons of video games about zombies and vampire the masquerade wasn't specifically zombies but that sort of like live action role play and energy and at that point the military actually took on some thought process of like what would we do if there's a zombie attack and this does a lot of great things one it doesn't commit you to admitting that anything horrible is going to happen because a zombie attack is definitely not going to happen but things like earthquakes, being assaulted by other nations, global warming, disease. These are things that definitely do happen and definitely preparing for the zombie apocalypse gets you ready for them. The thing about simple skills is it's what is going to keep you alive through the process. And this seems really disparate from open data because simple skills is like, What's the bare minimum of skills do I need to do the process? But as you think of like open data, like open data, there's a lot of data. So you gotta be able to sift through that and you really have to get down to like, what do we need to do in an emergency? How do we think through this process in an emergency? What does that look like? How does that happen? Um, and that has to be both for your personal situation and your business situation. So how do you think through that process? What what is important for that? How do you get to the point where you're just like, oh, that's something that I need to think about. That's something I need to take into account. So like, you know, if something happens to your business, you probably need to know like, what were my financials? What's the situation? What do I need to like re-up the business or restart the process? Um, you know, what's my fastest road to recovery? And the same thing about, you know, your life situation, right? Maybe you want a generator so your house can keep running. Maybe you want to make sure you have gas in the car or water in the basement or extra canned food around or something like that. Maybe you have a garden that you keep throughout the year um, and different like food stocks and stuff like that. It's not, it's, this answer is going to be different for everyone. You know, I have maybe about a week of food in my apartment. But like, if you are living on a homestead, like you have a longer time frame that between when you want to get from one point to another, like how long do you have to keep yourself um, alive and functioning? And so having a concept of simple skills, do I need to camp? Do I need to uh, live in the woods? How am I gonna get water? It's stuff to at least think about, right? And that's all part of the analysis that goes into a process, you know, whether it be at work or at home, um, you always have want to have an emergency plan ready. Now, as we kind of think about emergency plans, when emergencies happen, you need to accept loss forever. Uh, this is a Jack Kerouac line, uh, the guy that wrote On the Road, which is about him traveling Route 6 hitchhiking. It's really important to just like let go of what isn't serving you.
Um, you can't go back and fix it. It's never going to be fixed. It's never going to be a thing. You just have to be able to, you know, accept what has happened and move on. And that's going to be like if you lose a job, if you lose a relationship, if um, somebody dies, like these are all things that hurt and you hopefully grow more than the hurt is, right? Um, you know, a lot of times they say like the pain shrinks, but the reality is that maybe you just grow a little bit more and it makes it a little more bearable. There's always tough things that you go through. Um, I think one of the, the most difficult things for Virgo, for me personally, is it's a tough, um, the sun in Virgo is a tough time of year for me. Um, it's something that, it's a time period that I really struggle to get through. I don't know if it was allergies or it's definitely, a t you know, going back to school, going back to work, the weather starting to kind of fade into a cooler environment. It has marked the most difficult times in my life, um, whether it be going through breakups or um, depression and suicide attempts. Like that tends to happen in that that Virgo range for me, which is is really is like a difficult time for me. That's just something that I associate with loss and kind of through it so and as we kind of really grow ourselves and make ourselves into better people um, we start to act in a certain way right so um, there's a certain way that you're going to be sharing as much information with other people as possible and there's a certain way that you are going to be helping other people and providing value right so we're always looking for growth we're looking for contribution going back to those six um, points from Tony Robbins, um, there's six basic human needs, which are, again, variety, certainty, um, which are dichotomies, and again, with love and connection and uh, significance, which are, again, dichotomies, and then growth and contribution. So as you really start to form your identity and build that, then you can start to hand that off to other people. You can hand off skills, you can hand off tasks, you can hand off um, different thought processes, ways of thinking, you can start to teach. Um, there's all sorts of energy and growth that you can go through. And it's really important to go through that process. A lot of times we think of ourselves as a point in time and like how do we get to that point point? and something that Virgo really shows us is that we can always go back we can always kind of review the history we can always say like all right what happened why is you know this thing like this thing um, a lot of times when I think of analysis, I think of historical astrology. And the point of historical astrology is you go back and you say like, all right, the planets are in this particular position. When were they last in this particular position? So usually it's like, when was, I don't know, Pluto last in Capricorn, right? Because the U.S. is coming to their, it's Pluto return. Right. So like, how is what's happening now similar to the American Revolution? So there's a thought process of how do I relate what's happening now to what's happening in the past? And what's great about historical astrology is that it almost forces you to take a look at events and say like, are these related? And are these not related? Now, we're not assuming predictive astrology to be correct in this course. Um, but what we're saying is that do these events have anything in common? And that's kind of like the question. And when we kind of go back through the process and maybe yes, maybe no, but let's have that conversation. What 
happened in history that brought us to this point? What happened? What's happened in our company that has brought us to this point? Let's walk through the process that got us to here. Let's really understand, you know, what do our employees want? What do our customers want? What do, um, you know, what does each um, user, what are they expecting? And how are we delivering what they expect? Are we doing it well? Are we doing it mediocre? Um, why do they use us, right? So what is the appeal of us versus our competitors versus some other technology or thing that kind of puts us on, on a different path to success? And as we start to really kind of go through the data and go through the skill sets that we bring to bear and go through the process um, and accepting that maybe we can't recover every bit of everything, but we can certainly grow from where we are. Virgo is the beginning of the harvest season. So fall is going to start with Libra. Um, in the summer, you start to get some corn, you start to get better returns for all the work that you did all year. Virgo, the Virgin, and the that, um, and Italy and power, like a lot of like oil itself comes from the word olive, and that is something that was an engine of the ancient world, olive oil. What drives your company? What drives your your soul? What drives your passion? What's bringing you from one place to the next? And how are you really growing through everything that needs to happen? These are super important questions to consider. Are you acting in a certain way towards other people? Are you helping other people grow? Are you helping other people have access to what they need to have access to? Create that energy, create that workflow, right? Are you having one-on-one -on -one meetings with the people that you need to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with? Are you having group meetings with the people that you need to have group meetings with? Um, what does your mastermind look like? Do you have an organized mastermind where there's three, four, up to eight, not more than eight people that you really, really connect with and say, hey, let's meet you know, every day for 15 minutes and just say, this is what we're going to do, or, or, you know, this is what I did yesterday. This is what I'm going to do today. And these are the, any questions that I have, um, and provided they're quick, maybe there's answers. If not, maybe we schedule something later and we just kind of go through that process every day. There's just all sorts of energy creating ways of kind of doing this. And Virgo is a great way to do that.